couple of days ago I did a video to Mitchell from Australia. He'd done some lame ass experiment with a glass of water upside down with a, cup, a cover on it uh, and was claiming that it was nothing to do with gravity but entropy and the second law of thermodynamics and the high pressure of the atmosphere rushing in when he took the lid off was what was making the water fall. He's just done a debunk video. He's going to get busted. So patrons, I think you'll find you got your money's worth with this one. With grateful thanks to all my patrons, including new patrons, John Tomchick, Paul M. Rowe, Tom C., Bjorn Kamitz, James Holman, Michael O'Quinn, Stromgall, Edwulf Sledgeferter, Opus One, Keith Morrill, Tim Boston, Alexander Henkel, Janie, Stephen Huxtable, Surf, and Paul Reap, and my newest patron, number six. I also want to wish you all a happy Christmas and a fantastic new year. Thanks guys, you know I appreciate it. So this could get confusing because Mitchell had done his original video, I included clips of his video in mine. He's now doing a response and within that response there's bits of my video which includes clips of his video. So to save confusion and to help Fleurs follow this really confusing scenario, firstly I'm wearing a blue t-shirt this time, it was white in the original. Secondly, so that you can keep track and you know that this is the response to um, Mitchell's response, I wear a hat. Hopefully that will keep things nice and clear. Mitchell from Australia, roll VT. Before I let Mitch get started and stuck into his response to me, oh, this is me wearing a hat. Before I let him start, I thought it'd be worth just having a quick look at the title and description for his response video. Gravity is not a force. It doesn't stick gas to a globe. Not only do people believe we live on a globe, those same people believe their gravity is a force. Okay, I hope that's all clear. Go on, Mitch. Do your worst. The entire atmosphere is pulled down by gravity. Yes. If there was no gravity, that atmosphere would disperse into the vacuum of space. It's a great place to start, Mr. Sensible. If there was no gravity, then that atmosphere would absolutely disperse into the vacuum of space. Um, yes, Mitch. I'm not sure why you find that funny. Oh, I've got a hat. Not sure why you find that funny. If there was no gravity, there would be nothing to prevent the atmosphere from leaving. As it is, gravity has its effect on each and every molecule in the atmosphere. Just like you lobbing a tennis ball in the air, it will turn around and come back down. The same force is acting on those air molecules. No hat, simple. Don't take any notice of the natural law this violates. What natural law? Those air molecules are trying to whiz around and fly off into the vacuum of space but there's a force holding them back and that force is greater than their ability to overcome it so they remain but we do lose several hundred tons of atmosphere a day oh really mr sensible and what force would that be because gravity is not a force mate you really have learned from the riley school of fun duckery haven't you are you really going to just try and pick usage of words apart okay Newton described gravity as mass attracting mass as a force. Einstein described um, the curvature of space-time resulting in the, those apparent attractions. Same thing. Two different ways of describing the same thing. And Newton's laws are used for things like orbital mechanics and spaceflight. But do carry on, dear boy. You better brush up on the current understanding of gravity. Here, let me help. I don't think you can help. I listed all the things that you didn't understand in the first video, but since this is in your response, go on then. Help us brush up on gravity. From the University of Caltech. Einstein came up with the theory of general relativity 1915, the prototype of all modern gravitational theories. Its crucial ingredient involving a colossal intellectual jump is the concept of gravitation, 
not as a force, but as a manifestation of the curvature of space-time. Okay, Einstein, gravitation, not a force, curvature of space-time. Got it. The reason the bowling ball and the feather fall together is because they're not falling. They're standing still. There is no force acting on them at all. Well, the Professor Brian Cox clip looks a little out of context, but, yep, yeah, okay, not a force. Got it. Again. Brian Cox, there is no force acting on them at all. Gravity is not a force, but you can think of it as a force. Maybe yeah. that's the best. Well, there, my little pineapple chunk. You sort of skipped over that a bit. Let's hear that again, George Musa. Gravity is not a force, but you can think of it as a force. Maybe yeah. that's the best. But you can think of it as a force. Maybe yeah. that's the best. But you can think of it as a force. Maybe yeah. that's the best. I thought that's what he said. Gravity is not a force. But you can think of it as a force. This is from, taken from your response video. Now, literally, it's not a force. George Musa, 2019. It is literally not a force. Cherry pick much? Pumpkin? From Wikipedia. Gravity is most accurately described by general theory of re relativity, which describes gravity not as a force. Oh, how precious, Mitchell. You're not very good at this cherry-picking and quote-mining, are you? Halfway down that very same page. However, for most applications, gravity is well approximated by Newton's law of universal gravitation, which describes gravity as a force which causes any two bodies to be attracted to each other with the force proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Here's a top hint from a guy wearing a hat. Read the rest of the bloody page. From Universe Today, in general relativity, gravity is not a force. From physics.org, according to this theory, gravity is not a force. From Physics Info, from the Physics Hypertextbook, gravity isn't a force. Yes, and I agree. But don't forget what George Musa said. But it can be thought of as a force. You treat it as though it was a force. So, Mr. Sensible, now that we know there is no force of gravity to hold down those air molecules, how is it that gas pressure those air molecules do not disperse randomly in all directions into the vacuum of space. Anthony Riley, playbook number one. First of all, it's not a gas pressure, it's atmospheric pressure. That's something different, you need to read up about it. And secondly, why don't those molecules just clear off into space? Because of gravity. Whether you think of it as a force, or whether you treat it just as curvature of space-time, it doesn't matter. Gravity is just a name for it. And gravity is what's preventing that atmosphere just dispersing off into space. You ask, which natural laws does this violate? As described by NASA, the entropy of gas, or the second law of thermodynamics, is being violated here. Also, ideal gas law. PV equals RT. Mitch, you want to have a think about that equation. The S1 and... Oh, rats. Hold on. That was close. Don't want to confuse... Ooh. Don't want to confuse the fluffs. S1 and S2. The difference between the very, very edge of our atmosphere and space is negligible. So that as the difference between those two pressures is nothing, there's no entropy to take place. However, think of Mount Everest. At sea level, the air pressure is 14.7 psi. At the top of Everest, it's 4.89. So why doesn't all the air rush up there? Perhaps something is holding it back. I wonder what that could be. And I'd also like to point out to you that that V is a volume. To have gas pressure, it is a necessary antecedent to have a container, which is defined as the volume. 
no container, no gas pressure. That would also violate the natural law. I'm sorry, I think you've been listening to Nathan Oakley as well as Anthony Riley. A necessary antecedent for gas pressure is a container. Yeah, well, we're not talking about gas pressure. We're talking about atmospheric pressure. Have a look. Google is your friend. And the globe literally being the only example of his violation and can't be demonstrated. Well, what about Venus then? That's got an atmosphere. And Mars, that's got an atmosphere, although very thin. Jupiter, that's almost all atmosphere. Saturn and Neptune, much the same. So there are other examples of great amounts of gas being held down by gravity so that they can't disperse amongst the vac or into the vacuum of space. And according to you, where about to these planets? Oh, back in your sky vacuum, that's right the place that violates natural laws. So after arguing the toss that we couldn't have an atmosphere because it would clear off into space, you're now denying space. You know you can see the planets with a naked eye. Jupiter, Mars, Venus of course, and with a pair of binoculars you can even see the moons of Jupiter orbiting Jupiter. But we best not go there, you won't understand that either. Yeah, we can't use fake places as examples, mate. Well, this clip is from Kenneth Brandon, Dark Sky Chaser. He made this time lapse by taking photos with his Canon T3i and his Celestron C8 on an equatorial mount with tracking drives. It's there, you can see it. Get off your butt, find a buddy who's got a scope, find some dark skies and look at it with your own eyes and stop being a denier. And as I showed, gravity doesn't pull anything down, especially not gas pressure, it's not a force. How about you show us gas pressure without a container or gas pressure next to a vacuum with gravity stopping it from dispersing. All of those gas giants demonstrate it. Every planet with even the slightest atmosphere, such as Mars, demonstrates it. Earth demonstrates it. We have atmospheric pressure, 14.7 psi at sea level, and it fades away in a gradient right down to 10 to the negative 17 tor as it blends into the vacuum of space. There's no membrane. The only thing that's containing it is gravity. Whether you think of it as a force or as the curvature of space-time, those air molecules have lost energy as they try and climb up that curve and they start to fall back down again. Nature can never allow a vacuum to exist. Can't it? Look up at the night sky. 99.9999999999 and a lot more nines percent of the universe is vacuum. Your fundamentalist, religious beliefs won't be tolerated. Not fundamentalist, not religious. I'm an atheist. All I do is look at the evidence and the science. And as for you not tolerating things, I couldn't give a toss. If gas pressure was next to a vacuum, it would expand in all directions and fill the available space. About the only thing you said that is right. But there isn't gas pressure next to a vacuum. There is just a few odd molecules at the very, very outermost edge of our atmosphere. Below that, there's just a few more. Below that, just a few more still. You don't understand the model. As per entropy, described in the second law of thermodynamics, what you describe is a violation of these natural laws, something that you can never demonstrate. But my precious little cupcake, that's something we have never claimed. This is entropy. Say entropy again. Say entropy again. I dare you. I double dare you. Following the second law of thermodynamics. Say second law of thermodynamics one more time. Say second law of thermodynamics one more time. I dare you. I double dare you, father mucker. Say second law of thermodynamics one more goddamn time. <laughs> triggered much, mate? No, not triggered at all. It was humour. You kept talking about entropy 
and the second law of thermodynamics with respect to your upside down glass of water. It's a quote from a film, Pulp Fiction. That's why I chose this as the icon for my video. I know, it's painful seeing your religion getting absolutely demolished. Let's just repeat that one last time. If gas were next to a vacuum, entropy, that trigger word, oh, <laughs> it would take effect. And as per second law of thermodynamics, it would expand into the given volume. Yeah, sit down before you hurt yourself. Sorry, that was a bit Tarantino. Told you, if I was triggered and felt I needed to apologize, I'd have just taken it out of the video. It was there for humor. Look, Mitchell, you don't know what gravity is. You don't know what entropy is. You don't know what the second law of thermodynamics is. You don't know what a vacuum is. Hell, you don't even know what surface tension is. You don't know much, really. Don't project your own lack of understanding onto me, mate. Oh, Mitch, I think your lack of understanding is on full display. But make sure you stay watching right to the very end of this video, because it's going to get handed to you. Oh, you don't understand. Yeah. Classic baller line when their religion has been so demolished that they've got no arguments left. Understand this, Mr. Sensible. Gravity is not a force. And by your own admission, if there were no gravity, the entire atmosphere would absolutely disperse into the vacuum of space. And that is pretty much the end of Mitchell's response video. But Mitch, I'd like to just show you something from right at the beginning. From your response video description that I'm commenting on today, gravity is not a force, doesn't stick gas to a, to a globe. Not only do people believe we live on a globe, those same people believe their gravity is a force. And you've gone on and on and on with all those citations showing that gravity is not a force. Okay, so why does that matter? Well, I thought it might be interesting to look at the description of his first and initial video that I had debunked. Very weak vacuum, stronger than gravity, Mitchell from Australia. This simple observation shows a very weak vacuum overcoming the full force of gravity. Why then do... What? The full force of gravity, Mitchell? Oh my! Oh my, oh my, how embarrassing. Understand this, Mr. Sensible. Gravity is not a force. Gravity is not a force. Gravity is not a force. Perhaps, Mitchell, you were just thinking of it as a force. <laughs> Mitch, if you do decide to do a response to this video, you're going to have to wear a different colour shirt stick on a hat and maybe wear a scarf or something so we know what dream level we've got down to. Well, Mitchell from Australia, I think that you've been Mitch made. <laughs> I, I hope that you've all enjoyed this. Remember, tomorrow is the one minute debunk compilation. Saturday is the Conspirator Cheese Awards. Look forward to seeing you all then. Have a great Christmas and a wonderful new year. Until I see you again, Stay sensible. Shut up and sit down.